All right. We uh, we should be live here. Really, really excited. We're, we're a little early today because we got our first uh, our first speaker uh, who's speaking from outside of North America, which I'm really excited to, to have. Coach David Butler is here to talk to us about a, a topic that I think, especially coming off of quarantine, and I'm not sure what, you know, I know you, I've seen you on Twitter posting clips of some games that are happening in the UK right now. You know, I know certainly the US is up and rolling and in Canada, we're hoping to be rolling here soon. Somehow, uh, somehow we ended up on the very end of getting football started again. Um, but as we get going, you know, coaches have had for some of us almost two years for other places a year to learn all these new things. Um, and, you know, a lot of coaches who are probably viewing this channel who, who work hard in the off season and are trying to learn, you know, you can only run so much, but you want to have a ton of variety in your offense or your defense. And I think when you message me about, you know, doing this as a topic, my ears perked up right away, you know, cause I just said, Hey, what a, what a great thing for coaches to have to hear, especially right now is, you know, you want to be able to do a lot of different things, right. But you also want to be able to have your athletes be really confident and understand what they're doing and be able to execute. So coach David Butler is going to talk to us today about, you know, the art of multiplicity. And I want to say thanks, Coach, because pro I, you might have been one of our first 50 subscribers, I think, truthfully. I did. I did. And, uh, and you know, you've been huge. I remember seeing, who's this Who's this guy? I've never met, because a lot of my our first subscribers were people I knew, you know what I mean? Or, yeah. or people who knew me, at least through my coaching connections. Um, and I was like, this guy retweets everything we post. This guy is unbelievable. And then I just followed a lot, you know, you put out, you know, some content yourself and, you know, shared a lot of things on social media and on YouTube as well that, you know, I've been able to learn from. So I was just really happy to have you on and, you know, share some time with you today and talk about being multiple as an offense. So if you want to kind of introduce yourself and, and dive right into it, it looks like a great PowerPoint and, and we'll get rolling from there. Uh, well, uh, first of all, coach, I want to, I, I'm honored to be the first international speaker. Um, it truly is a, a, an amazing thing to be able to do. Also a little bit nerve wracking as I've never done a live before. So Normally it's pre-recorded, so it's all a bit of a of a thing you have to do. But hopefully we'll be okay. Um, first of all, I mean, I, I, in terms of the three down uh, development aspect, I've been a CFL fan for, since 1989, as I told you before. I love the Canadian game. I'm a big fan of it. I love it. When I first got my first OC gig, a lot of the, the things that I did early doors was heavily based on the CFL, uh, especially like the, the cross and the backs and stuff, which nobody I really knew at the time was, was doing that kind of thing. So I'm always heavily influenced by the CFL. Of course, we don't have that motion over here. So it's a little bit different. But um, what I found about, about our thing was like, you learn as you move along, and, and that's kind of what we're here about today. Um, so thank you for having me on Couch. I'm, I'm truly honoured. It. Um, it's a blessing to be a part of this channel. And I've got a lot of respect for what you guys do and, what, and, and the work you put out and the people you have on. You have on some amazing, amazing coaches on this channel. So uh, hopefully you can continue to grow and get better and better and better. But today, we're going to talk about um, multiplicity and what I call the art of multiplicity. And uh, for me, it's a topic that I'm heavily uh, involved with and I'm heavily, uh, you know, interested in, in trying to push forward because um, as an air raid guy, I came through it as an air raid guy. Um, we, obviously, we came through as a four receiver set, one running back, you know, short passing game, small amount of plays uh, and then, um, and repping over and over and over again, and that's that's the core of, of what we do, and it's still my core belief to this day. But when I got when I got my opportunity to be offensive coordinator for the very first time in 2013, uh, at quarterback left, uh, we had a load of guys retire. So it was it was a case of us changing our DNA, changing the, the way that we were. And of course, as a first year, I said that, that was a lot of things to take on, and I had to I had to think about an attack how I would do it. And when I started to think about you know who am I going to put a QB, what am I going to do here, what am I going to do there. The wheels started turning, and uh, over the course of time, from that year where we were successful, through through then, through through to now, through to now, where I've had, uh, I've been offensive coordinator at two two senior teams uh, in the UK over the stretch of ten years, and I've pretty much run the same things over that course of time, and where the multiplicity has developed over that course of time. Which today I want to talk about the art of multiplicity, and more importantly, in today's little talk, it's going to be more about the exotic formations that we, that I've picked up over time that we can incorporate into our regular standard base plays. So that's what we'll talk about today. And hopefully, um, like I say, I'm all about relatable content and everything that I do, I hopefully that some, somebody can 
I'll never resonate with it or go, yeah, you know what, I could try that. And that's what it's all about for me. It's never about anything the bottom. Just trying to pass on what I've learned to somebody else. Uh, you can see there, it's well be multiple. And if you don't know about the UK game, in the UK we have, at, at adult men's level, we have two We have two versions. We have a university, a university season, which is in the winter, and we have a senior adult season, which is in the summer months, where it starts, it starts uh, winter time to early spring practices. So our, our season would, be, would start April to September in, in the senior league. We also have a, a flourishing women's game and a flourishing um, junior game, but they're, they're still springing up here and there and everywhere. I'm not really involved in those, those levels of um, football. Basically, adult men for me. And so that's what we do. And as I said to coach before this thing started, we're, we're, we're coaching grown men. We're coaching grown men and we're coaching men that have families. We're coaching men that have jobs. And we're coaching men that, that haven't got the time and the, and the uh, you know, to be like um, a professional team where they can practice several times a week. So in the, in, in the UK and in most parts of Europe, our practices are limited. And in the pre-season, during the dark nights, they are usually limited to one practice per week on a Sunday. So we won't get two hours, we won't get two and a half, depending on what team you're with and what you're doing. So our practices are limited, so we need to get as much as we can in and, be, and get as, as much done in the time that we have. So what I, what, what I learned from my own thing is that my, my air raid playbook, combined with the, the use of doing things differently, gave us answers or chances to, as I put there, chances to equalise and gain advantages. And that could be something so simple and so easy that you, you, you just stumble upon it at times. But it, it was it's, it's things that I found over the course of my own coaching career that obviously you don't normally get at the very start when you're coming through yourself. You know, being an offensive coordinator, it's not just about calling players. It's, it's the process that you learn and I've learned and, and I've learned and developed over those 10 years, especially in this country. It's not a, an easy path for people to think calling the players is easy. You know, that's what you do. That's not what it is. And if it's hard here, then it's harder and harder the, the higher and higher you go. Um, playbooks will vary team to team. And they'll, and, they'll, and they'll always be different depending on the level and the experience. In the UK, we have got um, three three tiers. So we've got Division 2, which really is like Sunday league, Sunday league football or pub teams. I must reduce if you reduce that reference. But pub teams or Sunday League re references. And then we've got Division 1 level, which is a good standard. And then we've got a Premiership, which is the highest level you can play at in this country. So, of course, if you're playing and coaching at those different levels, your, your practice attendance will vary, your commitment will vary. People will be going on a holiday halfway through the season and you'll have two linemen on a Sunday and stuff like that. All those kind of weird and wonderful conglomerations that happen when, when, you're, when you're coaching, you know, grown men with families and stuff. So, so the, the levels vary and the playbooks vary. And there we have our skill sets of players could really, we can stumble upon a baller who's, who's either been playing for a long time or come to university, or we can get a guy who's 35 years old Never played before. What's the NFL on a Sunday? Comes along and wants to play. So we have to find ways to get them involved and still be able to keep them. And, and obviously they, they play their own way. They keep our, our teams flowing. We have to keep playing to keep them involved and still be competitive because at the end of the day, we still want to win games and we still want to be, um, you know, able to produce good football. So we, my, my, my own thought process along with this was as I went along to, to the thing when I became an offensive coordinator I really wanted to change up from being a full wide receiver team so I, I went into the Dana Holgerson mind frame of I wanted to be pro and two back set because one our athletes at the time we had two very good running backs and our quarterback as I said earlier our quarterback had left and we literally basically put a, um, a wide receiver at quarterback in good luck so that was basically our season. Rosan Rigo back in the day, he was more like a, a power guy. But he that's what we did. And then we we found that by adding formations, it seemed like we were doing a fat lot, like a, a huge amount of stuff. Like you come out in, in empty, then you come out in pro, then you come out in tight end set. But really you're still just running into a zone left all the time. Nothing's really changed. So it seems like we're doing a whole lot, but in reality, we're not doing anything different. When we take, when we install that play, we install everything in two by two, first and foremost, and then we'll move on and, and add things bit by bit. So our playbook uh, patterns over the course of the preseason. But 
once you get that play in and, and, the, and the, the line not the line knows that they're inside zone rules you can start messing about then with what we're doing in terms of the back end so we can have two backs because the backs crossing we can have, have the two backs and one back going on a, on a motion it doesn't really matter what we do outside of it because the play itself has never changed so whether we cross or whether we do it it's all still the same so that was what kind of the thing and as I always tell um my guys all the time is that there's some smart defensive coordinators out there, especially in this country too, some smart guys. If we don't have to beat them, we're going to beat the guys on Sunday. And the guys on Sunday are like you, they practice once a week, they can make mistakes, and, be, and doing doing less, but getting more out of, that, out of those plays, for me, gives us that equalisation across the board, and sometimes it creates advantages. And, then, and I think, you know, sorry, sorry to interrupt, but, you know, your point yeah. I think about you know, all of us in some way are, are, no matter what level you're at, right? Even if you're coaching at the CFL level, the more you can do while keeping yeah. that high level of understanding for your players, the better, right? So that's, you know, I think one of the things that I'm trying to take away from, you know, learning a, a lot in the last year, um, you know, kind of independently and learning different things in the, you know, the four down American game, 11 player game, whatever you want to call it, um, you know, is, okay, well, how can I, how can I take this and and work either work it into what we already do, or is there something we already do that I can make a small change to to get the same benefit that you know this concept that the team's already running? And so again, like whether you're in your situation and you're coaching, you know, grown athletes who are you know ha you have full time jobs and you you have limited practice time. I think every coach in every league goes, oh, we don't have enough practice time. You know what I mean? No matter as you get higher up in the levels, even you know the CFL, the pro, right? there's more that you have to be able to do. You know what I mean? I know high school coaches on, you know, on our side of the world, it's the same thing. Hey, we might get five practices, but I might only have or three, four practices in a week, but I might only have, you know, every player for three of them. And, you know, on, and on one of them, you know what I mean? We have half the guys, one of them, we have half the other group. And, you know, it's, it's so hard to, it's so hard to build that sense of confidence and consistency. And, and I think that's something where a lot of coaches, then say, okay, well, we can't be multiple. We're going to like, and for example, when I played, you know, in high school, we ran one formation, right. And we had a system and, 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 you know, we had a, a fairly developed offense out of that one formation, but we really only ran one formation. Right. And I feel like a lot of coaches feel like they have to choose, do I want good execution or do I want a lot of stuff? Right. And I think somewhere in the middle for everyone is your best team your best performance right so it's 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 such a it's such a real you talk about relatable content like i think this is a relatable solution for everyone no matter what you know we could have kyle shanahan on here and he probably like oh, i would have liked 10 more plays in practice this week you know what i mean and we look at that and going dude you had like 35 hours with these guys i get 35 hours with them in a year you know but it, it's such a relatable topic and that was that was kind of my only support because i'll, I'll learn the game as an air guy in, in, in two by two that's all we. That's all we ran as really, three by one. That's it. That's all we ran all the time. We never changed it. Of course, as I, as I put there when I, on about being multiple, it's like the, the roster changes every year, especially at our level. Guys leave to go to move to different parts of the country. Uh, something might come up. They might have children on the way and they can't play no more, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Or they get injured and they they think I'm not going to play no more because you know I might lose my job. So you, our rosters change every single year. You're never going to get those same guys back every year. And that's where I put there is, can you adapt your playbook to fit your player? So in my very first year, my playbook didn't fit. Didn't fit. The playbook that I had learned didn't fit my, my players. So I had, to, I had to manipulate it. And that's why I was trying to get more and more things in. Different, but the same. And I put there, the second point is, creating continuity is important. As I just spoke about there before, it's like, if I, I, I've, I've got a, 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 a slide in a little bit, but if I'm running stick and, you know, Stick concept is stick concept across the board. We all we all know it from you know England to uh, Afghanistan. We all probably run it. Uh, stick is the same. But if I if I teach stick one way, and then I bring in a second back, what really changes? Only that one back route. But it gives the defense just another headache. And if I go into a, a sink queen look, the defense will adapt again. But things change for us. And that's why we we try to create continuity in all of our concepts. So our, our concept we may only carry ten. And pass concepts again, maximum. As an arrow guy, I might carry four or five quick and two or three 
deep, and then I'll have a rollout, and then I'll have a swing. And that is it. That's all. That's all we carry. So we want to create continuity by sticking in them. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll move people around, and that and, now, and that and that way we can create continuity in our teaching. So when we teach it, we teach it the first time, and then when we want to move one guy, it's just one guy learning, and, that, and that's all it is. And it, we find that can be an acceptable approach to how we do things. For me, and I, I, I think if, you've, if you've ever watched one of my videos in the past, for those of you that haven't, you know, feel free. Uh, cheap install, you'll hear me talk about my cheap install all, all day and night. It's the, it's the best thing ever. If you can get cheap install, you're onto a winner. And for me, formation, a cheap install. You can move guys around. As I said before, it makes defensive coordinators think, uh, and especially defensive players think, and, and that's and for me, the cheaper install and adding formation to what you already run is a is a great way of getting that equalizer or gaining that advantage, which we're all trying to do with limited time, limited reps, limited personnel. And we add that cheap install and our formations, and we, we we add to that with our misdirection, our motions, and again multiple looks, which create problems for our defense uh, when we face them. And of course, we're also we're, uh, a no huddle team in the past. So we'll be going fast, but as fast as our referees will allow. When we're going fast, and you put those things together, so we'll line up in I form, and the next play we're in pro, the next play we're in we're in um, we're in king or queen, but we're still we're in the same place every time. They they have to figure that out for themselves. They don't know what's going to change, and 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 that for me is what I love about the the idea or the ideal of multiplicity. And I put there, do not let your playbook dictate what you can and cannot do. So don't. Force yourself into having 17 pass plays and you've only got two wide receivers. There's no point in doing that. Your playbook has to change every single year. Regard, and your playbook has to be uh, adaptable enough to change every single year. So you can't just go ahead and throw stuff up a wall for God knows how many weeks and thinking it's going to work and then you find out it doesn't work and you end up reverting back to what you, you started doing at the very start of pre season, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and I put there, well, don't be afraid. If, one of the things that I, I, I learned early doors was my ex was my ex and my Y was my Y and stuff was like that. And they, they stayed there, they stayed there, throughout the game. But of course, you realise that the more, the more you, you develop yourself as a coach, you realise that, you know, I need to move my Y somewhere else because he's my best athlete. I need to get in touches, especially when your QB can't throw. So how do I get in touches? What do I do to get in touches? Is it, is it, is it a quick bubble? Is it a jet? Do I bring me in the backfield? And those are the angles where we, we talk about there being multiple, multiplicity is not just a formation, it's, it's moving people around to gain advantages and leave which best we can. And the thing that I came up with in the last three years, of course, like yourself, coach, when we watch all these clinics that we have for two for two years nearly, because we, we didn't play, we didn't play in 20. Uh, we've had two years of washing clinics and studying and scribbling, and we write down stuff into our notepad. I found that. In 19, we would carry two exotic looks. When I say exotic, it's something that we, we, we really don't, you wouldn't know us for, but we, we, I call them exotics. And I would change those exotics every every year, so they're always different. And I have to, have, my only rule is I have to fit what I do. And I'll, I'll show you both of those exotics in in the clips. Because I, I kind of, you know, we all can run trips and we all can run uh you know, two by two, and I'll almost be pure for empty to a certain extent. So I like to do, I like to do things a little bit different, but it fits my personnel. And you've got to, you've got to adapt everything that you do to fit your personnel. If you've got two tight ends, then make sure you put something in there where you can use your tight ends, etc. Et but if you've got no tight ends, uh, we have no season. You don't have one, let alone two, and you don't, you don't do that kind of thing. For me, the create the exotic formations really exploits the scale because they won't expect it, and we'll use it, we'll use it throw it out there. When we haven't repped it for, when they haven't seen it on film, so if we play, if we play a team for a second time or a third time, we'll come out with a new formation that they haven't seen. But it's no new teaching for our, our concepts because it's still conceptually the same look, same stuff. It's just a case of it's not really any different. It just looks different. I'll put at the bottom simplicity is key because for me it is. It is. We want to look like we're being really, really, really um, hard to figure out, but we're not. It's just really simple. Everything we do is simple. We have simple pass concepts, simple run concepts. We only carry two runs, maybe three runs, and that's it. You know, we, we don't do a lot. Simplicity is the key. We learn those plays. And as air raid guys, speaking to guys who run the air raid a long time, you'll know that we, we run 
and rep and rep and rep the, those our core players over and over again. Like, we we have to want to be uh, you know good at getting bored. That's that's kind of the, the mantra of of, um, of, of the area. You, you have to be happy getting bored because you win the same thing over and over again, and that's kind of what we do. And when when we do all these things together, you can see the personal package that I put there. We, you can run anything and it, whatever suits you. But for me, when we go up tempo and, we, and like we, we're quick quick to get in and out of, the, of our break, get to the line, and we run a no huddle offense, and we have a small playbook, and then we combine that with motions and formations and the misdirection post snap, and the, and the same teaching to get to where we are. That usually for me gives us an equalizer or it gives us an advantage. And when we do all those those six or seven bullet points, for me, it makes it makes the defense make mistakes. It makes the misalignment. If we got if we go at tempo and we're in one formation, we can we go to the line. We're in a different one. That defense is going to adjust because, we, because they can't change personnel. They have to come out in the same set, and they can't adapt quickly enough. So, like I said in the previous slide, we know how good some DCs are in this country. We haven't got to beat them. We've got to beat the other guys on the field on a, on a Sunday. And by us trying to create those. Simple um, little little wrinkles gives us the legs to, for us to do those things. This slide here, and it is it is uh, it is stick. It is my favourite player football. This is this is how we run stick. I'm sure you all run stick very similar. But um, you can see that if you look at those four those four slides or the four squares, you can see that our, our very first install on the on the right on the right bottom corner is in gun as our two by two look. So we'll install that day one, okay? And once we once we comfortable with that in uh, 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 one, we'll then install it in trips. And you can see that all we're doing is bringing our height across. He's still running this land. There's no new teaching. There's nothing new. We're bringing that guy across. He's doing the same thing he's doing on the left hand side. He's going to do it on the right hand side, okay? If we go into pro, the R is running a is running a swing still, so, and we just mirror it with the height running the swing. If we go into queen. Which is a second of our, of our two back formation. You can see that on every single picture, the right hand side of the concept is the same. If you've got a right handed quarterback, nothing's going to change like QB reads, pre snap, post snap, and hot. Nothing's ever going to change. The only way it would change would be, would be, would be pre snap, uh, the back side of it. So if, if you can take advantage of the H on the arrow or the H on the swing because they, you've got the single side matchup, then we can do that. And we can create those advantages by moving personnel around with the trips. Or pro or queen, bringing guys in the box usually means they're going to bring guys in the box and that exploits our X on the on the one on the on the left hand side in our um, in our single single side matchup. And that's just one example. That's that's kind of the thing that we do, and we do run we'll say seven seven or eight formations per per game per season. Those are our regular seven, and these these are four of them. We also have king, and we have other other things like those those um those formations. Let me just uh. Switch the screen to um film. Uh, as as I know, if you not don't know, but uh, I'm in between gigs right now, so I'm a free agent, so I have no huddle, I have no quick cut, or I'm not posh like coaching and got uh, uh what you called um the sport. I ain't got that stuff there. That's posh stuff. We ain't got that. So right now I'm just gonna use the clip that I've got on my um on my PC. Okay. But we'll talk about that works great, coach. No worries at all. Okay, so in, in this first clip, this is from 2017, I just want to put this one in because it's it's a little bit older, but it, it just it just shows you what we're going to do. And all this play is, we can see that we're in our, um, what we would call our, our king set, okay? Which basically means our full backs to the right, and we're in a pistol to the full backs to the right. And this is this is simply a QB sweep. Now, we run QB sweep from a variety of formations. I'm going to show you a lot. But you can see that once we install QB sweep from whatever formation we install it in, the teaching becomes very simple across the board. So we know that we're going to run QB sweep. Our fullback's going to lead, our running back's going to lead, and our two receivers are going to try and block these guys' heads up. Okay? So on the staff, you can see that our QB is going to be lead following his two lead blockers. Our, our receivers don't do a great job of, of doing anything there, but what can you do? You can see our QB gets north and gets down to the one. Okay? This is 2017, so we've run, we've run this play for a long, long time. This has been in our playbook for a long, long time. And you can just see that this is 2017. We're running QB sweep to the right. Okay? That will be one play for us. We would, we would run sweep first, 
with the or toss first with the um, or outside down, whatever you want to call it. It's, it's almost the same thing. We blocked at the same way. Our, our line will block outside down. Our receivers will block, and we would we would block. We would run that play as one first. Then we would adapt into QB three, and then we would move it forward into formation. Okay, so we'll take it forward to our, our last um, our last foray into football before Calvin got us. Okay, and now we've got the team that I was with last. This is the team in the purple. Okay, and you can still see that we're now in in Queen, which is the same formation, but it's the full back to the left. Okay, and this is still going to be QB sweep. Okay, so the formation's changed, and you can see we've, we're down the goal line. So we've already ran some eye form, we've already ran some stuff inside that inside that goal line, trying to hit me heavy. My, my, my mantra when it comes to inside the five is you're going to run the football. Three, four, four fucking times. Not great to that. You're going to sniff stuff in every single time. One of the things that I adapted over the course of time was that if you look at how far away my uh, X is, I'll create, I'll, I'll try to create a big void there for uh, people to run into. And that was one of the things that you learn from 17 to 19 when you go back and watch the film and you think, actually, you know what, I can make this work by making this guy farther away. Before you, you play that, Coach, I'm, I'm just going to make sure that the, the setting's on for, for the optimized video um, so, okay. that, so that it plays as smoothly as possible here. So just give me one okay. second. I don't know if this will show up on the screen, but um, why is that not let me do it? Um, can you go to – when you have your uh, – well, actually, it might be – hold on. It might be on my video. Um, one second here. Sorry to break up the. Uh, it's okay. Give me a breather. Yeah. Sorry to break up the um, the the rhythm here. I think it's already on because I usually have it on no matter what. Okay. Um, Look, this this film was quite good on on from from the rep time, but a little bit of backstory into this into this team. I came into this team in 2019 after coaching there very first time in 2013. I came back because my head coach is one of my best best friends. Yes, we come on board. And I, I take, took over the RC role. I knew going in. There was going to be no quarterback. I knew going in there was going to be no um, vets, the same as there wasn't the first time. So we have to make it adapt and change our playbook. So our, our QB in this situation is a wide receiver, and he's not the best passer. So, of course, if you're not the best passer, then our pass concepts are going to be minimal. So we have to make sure that we can continue to move the football in any way, shape, or form possible. So, you know, we go back into the well, and we, we dig out our... Um, our QB sweep, because at the end of the day, you've got a fast guy there at quarterback who can basically run the football. So you can, you can see in the situation that we're going to try to take advantage of our two lead blockers to the outside. And if one of our backs gets a, gets a block on the, on the back or the end, we're going, to, we're going to basically walk it in. Yeah, you're, you're good to go there, coach. You're good to keep going. Okay. You can, so you can see there, we basically feel that edge over and walk it home. Okay. The things really changed the awful in terms of the teaching from 17 to now. We just we've just evolved the way the play the play is. Okay? And you can see that we're we're in our, in our queen formation right there. And we score. Okay. So this is the same game. And this is what we this is where we talk about exotic formations. Okay, this is one of the two that the two that I put it in 2019. And for us, if I split the field in half, right down the middle. The left side of the field is trips, so there's no new teaching. Our offensive line knows that we're going to run QB sweep, so they're going to block QB sweep. Okay. The only new things now is two guys. We have our X lined up as a fake tight end. He's not a real tight end because he's not big enough, but he's going to go down there and put his hand in the ground to give them a, a gap to cover. So we got a, we got a, we got a, a, a six down lineman, and we put our running back. Rather than putting him next to the QB, we're going to put him behind the tackle and we're going to send him in motion. Why? Just to fuck with him. That's basically it. We're just there to fuck with him. And we do, and we, we will utilize that motion later on, but we try and build it and give them things to worry about over and over again. So for us right now, this play is the same exact play that you've seen in the first two, the first two clips, but it looks nothing like the same play. But it's no new teaching for our quarterback. He knows he can get the ball. He's going to sprint to that outside. If our receivers block the block the short block properly, he's going to walk it in. So you can see that we we got our six down lineman. 
We're going to send that running back in motion to keep this guy occupied and to keep this guy occupied. They don't know what to do. We've then got man across the board on the, on the trip side, which we were expecting when we were tripped anyway. So he's going to man up in the red zone. If his guy's blocked, this guy's just going to literally going to walk into the park for another touchdown. We're going to score one today. You can see that we don't do a great job blocking, but we get enough and we punch it in. So for me, I've shown two, three clips. One, how we've adapted the play. This, this third clip is the same play as that first two clips, but looks nothing like it. But it's the same play and the teaching that was involved with all we had to teach my guys was receivers, don't do anything different. Running back, you're going to line up behind the tackle and go in motion. And tight end, you're going to stand the line and do absolutely nothing. And then we still want the QB to the, to, the, to the strong side of the situation where the block is supposed to be. And because he's, he's quick and fast, we get in. And you can see that that's another way of manipulating the, 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 uh, the defense. Okay, we're now in empty again. Okay, and this is again, this is still the same play QB sweep. We're now going to go QB sweep right. And this is where it's different because we're going to follow our running back now. So again, it's what's the teaching on this? Nothing. Because the, when we install the formation, these guys know where they're, what they're doing in trips anyway. They're going to be blocking. These guys know they're going to be running, uh, doing outside zone right. Our running back's going to go in motion. He's going to lead like he did on the first play. He's going to go to block. Now QB is now going to go uh, QB sweep right. Okay. And the reason why we're doing this in this situation is because this is game three of our, of our 2019 season. There's a QB that's never played QB before. He's not, he's not having the best day of passing. So what I want to do is keep, is keep the chains moving and keep us in front by getting the athlete the ball. And this guy right here and this guy right here are our two best athletes, so we have to find ways to get them the ball continuously. So in this situation, you see now that our running back goes in motion and our QB is just going to follow him. And we're keeping the noise first there and get into, get into, the, into the half of the field. So, when we break it down and we talk about what are we teaching new in this play, coach? What new teaching is in this play for anybody? Nothing. If we install QB sweep day one and we teach it, let's say we teach it in our, in our feedback formation, what's going to change when we bring it into this or into the formation? Nothing. We've given them something else to think about and they've got to, they've got to honor the trips. They've got to honor all this stuff. And we've already, we've already run, run uh, QB sweep left on them. So they've got to honor every aspect of it. And now all we're doing is changing, changing direction. It's not even a new, a new formation, it's changing direction. And it's something else for the defense to think about. It gives us legs. It gives our, our playmakers opportunity to have the ball in hand, make plays, and create first downs. Giving us chances to equalize and win. Okay, so that was just three, that was just three or four examples of our, of our um, QB sweep. Now we're going to talk about Jet. Now we all run jet, right? We all run jet. Okay. Now we we didn't run jet, standard jet. Okay. As you can see, in, in my offense, our X and our Y are on. That's that's rule every time. Okay. So that means our, our H and our Z are off. So our H and our Z gonna run gonna run the jet. When we run the jet, our, our running back is gonna lead block for him, and our QB, if he does his job properly, you know, sometimes you can be retarded the way it is. They don't always do what they're supposed to do. Okay, so he's going to single him across. Okay. Our running back's going to lead. And you can see we've got, we've got another fast guy getting out there. Creating, creating first downs, creating uh, opportunities for a guy with speed and a guy who's got great athleticism to get the ball in his hand and keep us moving. So you'll see on this play, I QB does, does do well. He would have been great as well because he, he, he hands it off and runs, and runs the, uh, the zombie aspect of it. Okay, you can see that keeps us going Our running back's going to lead. You got a, a bit of good blocking. But at the end of the day, this guy is, is now Speedy B. That was his nickname. Not not like your Speedy B, but he was now Speedy B because he was rapidly, rapidly fast. And then um, you can see that he turns it up. And he, and he makes the first down. Now, notice the foot, notice where they are on the field, notice the game. This is the very next play. We line up with no huddle. We line up, and now we're in our second exact formation. 
And our second exotic formation for me was I adapted the pistol wing to fit our personnel. Okay. And all, all we did in this was that our two slots uh, are still our two slots. However, all I did when we, when we talk about moving our pers our people to take advantage, if I, I if I if our, our Z just was at Z, we've now moved our slower, fatter guys, shall we say, outside, and we put our two best athletes inside. Okay? Now, we will run a ton of stuff off of this. It's not just always going to be, yeah, sweep, et cetera, et cetera. But we'll run stuff off of this and pass those off of this. But we want to give give guys the best opportunity. You can see that, this, that, that play just was a jet from two by two. We're now going to run a jet from what we call them. Um, what do you call this? What is this, this formation? Can't remember. Colt. We call this place Colt, Colt because it was a gun and we were like, we were like we were good. okay? So what's going to change for us teaching? He's going to block out there. He's still going to block. He's going to start from a standing a standing start and come across the face of the QB. It's still a jet. There's no new teaching for us. It's just a different look. And how are they, how are they different to where they, where, where they was five seconds ago? They just moved beyond the tackle. Literally, simple teaching and effective Especially when we talk, when we're going at tempo, and the defense can't get time to evaluate and change what they're doing on the field. Like I said, we don't have to beat this guy over here. We have to beat these guys here. We're not worried about this guy if he can't change the people. They can't get the course because we're going too fast. You can see that we're now in cold. You can see that receiver blocks there. Our running back does the very same thing that he did when he was um, running it from two by two. Nothing new to teach. You're just standing in a different spot. You know, you can pretty fast. You can pretty pick up where you're going to stand somewhere really, really quickly. If if you if your rules in the play don't change, if you know your rules apply the same, whether you're standing here or you're standing here, it's pretty much a, a quick a quick pick up, and we get it pretty fast. And you can see that we turn the corner there. We pick up another massive gain. So we've, we've run two plays on this on this opening drive, and all we've done is run jet. Two different formations. I, I think your point right. of of moving like personnel around as well is is something that's really yep. valuable, um, yep. especially you know when when everyone it doesn't matter you know who you are you all have different players with different skill sets and I think. Yep. You, even though in you know 60, 70, 80 percent of your plays, you might want your Y receiver at the Y. That doesn't mean you should for those 20 percent of your plays, you go, I really wish that guy was in the backfield or, you know, I really wish that player that we usually use as a running back was actually in the slot for this play so we could run the jet. I think a lot of people think, like you said, like you don't want your system to, to take you out of good plays. Right. And so being flexible with with personnel and that's something I think the NFL is doing a way better job of now than even 10 years ago. And, you know, the CFL, it's very common, like receivers will play yeah. Yeah. all over the place. And with motion, you know, it's not as big of a problem because they don't even need to line up, you know, where where they're going to end up. Right. So it, it leaves a lot on the table yeah. there in, in terms of that. But it, it's you know, I think a lot of times hey, if we have a really good blocking receiver and they play on the left side all the time, well, if you, know, you have a really important run play on third and three or, you know, second and four or whatever, and you want to run behind that player, well, just, ha you know, whether it's formationally or motion or, or just a different, you know, set of personnel, you know, being able to get that player to where you need them in the moment is, like you said, it's a cheap install, right? It doesn't take too much to say, hey, you know, if we, if we say this word, we're going to take – you know, these two receivers and they're going to play on the other side versus, exactly. you know, where they're supposed to be. I, that's especially in high school. Like I, I think a lot about, you know, whenever I'm doing these videos for high school coaches in, in Canada or in the United States. And I think, you know, the, the opportunities to get your, either your best players, the ball or put players in, in a position to be successful on different plays, you know, that's like the cheapest install ever. It's just being able to move players within the formations you already have. And of course, I've not even spoken about a simple any, any air raid concept right now. We're just running nothing this really, but it's just the case that we we have, we can keep our core concept. We can we can look busy by doing simple things like jets and by running the QB sweep, which really anybody can do. When I say we, we can add you can add this to your offense, anybody can add a QB sweep, anybody can add a jet. It doesn't really matter what you do. 
It's a third look at this side. Players want to get another look into because you know, you know, the way. But it's the same teaching. You can see that we've we've got our our two best athletes are at the slot or at the wings, whatever you're going to call it. Um, I can't I love the number of all this formation. Oh, I just told you it was um, cold. Um, but there's no new teaching to anyone just where they're up. So when we call Colt, our two slots knew they went outside and our two fast guys knew they went inside just by the word Colt. So when we drew it up and said we're going to run Colt today, those guys knew that they're going to go inside because we want the two fastest guys to get the ball. That's not slight on these guys on the outside, but we, we still have to make, make yards and make plays. And, you know, if you put a slow guy back there, he might not make that, the edge, et cetera, et cetera. Especially when you're five on linemen, four of them are rookies. One of them is a, a guy who was a defensive line the movie. You know, all these things are moving parts that change every year. So you can see it again. We're just trying to create opportunities to get the, our players the ball. I see we slacks on that one. You can see that we've got an, another one of our best athletes in space getting the football. Just by moving people around, showing them a formation, and how they adapt to it. I think we should have should have come this way on this one, but you know, like I say, they, every rep isn't always gold, but the play itself worked for us in the main back in the yards out of it. Okay. This is the, this is the only time I'm going to talk about this because like, it correlates with something else in a minute. But we're just going to run zone read because of our QB. So as soon as we install that, after we're back going to be dive. Or whether it's inside zone or it's outside zone, actually, you'll be at the green line to pull it every single time. That's that's our rule because we want actually to get the ball in zone if he has the opportunity. So, especially if he's going to hand the ball off, and sometimes you may need a nudge and you go, you know, Phew, what's that back end? Is he what's he doing? Because they get in that mind where they keep handing the fucking ball off all the time. So, you, you give them a nudge and say, you know, what's that end? What's the numbers like? And you can see in this situation, even though we want to dive, our numbers match up because they're all going to follow in. Which means that we've only got to get one guy on the outside and we can turn this into his own replay. Okay? The play itself isn't that in so much. The reason why I'm doing this, I want to show another picture of, of uh, cold formation. But the, the, the constant teaching is always there. So, what we talk about constant teaching is that we teach this in this play. So, we, we want to just teach zone read really everything we do. Just because if we have that athlete there, we want to be able to utilize him. So, this is a, strat, a simple sort of uh, inside, uh, dive play. But our QB has to agree to pull it whenever he wants. You see that guy, guy dive in, a uh, pack of pancakes in, and we just walk into the end zone. The play itself is irrelevant for me on this clip. I just wanted to show us run the zone read off of it because it, it lines itself up to the next play. Just to, just to be constant in the teaching. So our first clip of each one has been us running it in our normal formation, so to speak. And then we can get exotic with it or we can continue our teaching. But we're not really learning anything new. We're just giving them new ways to get things done. So you can see here now, we're back in that cold formation. We're back in that two by two. We've probably done that jet play five or six times. You can see how condensed they are. We've got our, our X really on the touching the, the sideline to create that void there. We're trying to make them, you know, really bite down on that, on that jet, as you do. The QB knows that when we're running that, he gets that green light. He gets that green light every single time. And so if he's, if he's always on this guy and they're biting, they're biting, if you keep it, the zone read aspect travels across the whole spectrum and you saw on that jet earlier where we ask our QB to read the read the read the end read the end read the end, read the end. it's for a reason we're trying to keep our, our teaching constant so on this play you can see that we're going to run the jet play again and they all bite down but our QB this time keeps it because we've got numbers on the on, on this side on the short side or the boundary side we've got one man up here and our, our tackle's taking care of him he makes him run miss there because he's fast. And again, a simple way to gain yards when the only person pitching the ball is a QB. It's, it's really, really simple and a really, really effective way of moving the, the chain, keeping the, 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 the sticks going and making things work. Okay, this next one is my only rollout play. And we do this various ways. But I'll, I will tell you how, how, we, how we run it and what, and what we do. But this is our only rollout play that we carry. So we, our, our offensive line and our running back are going to run inside zone or inside zone rules. And our QB will mesh with that running back and he's going to read. Nobody really, but it, we, we need the mesh like we run it inside zone. So we're going to run inside zone. Our boy is going to run a whip. 
uh, as he's going to run a, a slant post corner in the red zone, we're going to run a drag from our, our height, and that X literally is doing nothing apart from watching the play on the side because it's never going that way, unless they don't cover in pre snap. Okay, so those are the four routes on this play. I'm probably not to get too technical in, in terms of concept because we'll be here all night and, you know, it's not what we're here for. I'm trying to do multiplicity rather than what, we, what we're trying to do conceptually. But um, that's the basis of the play, okay? So our, our QB is going to take the inside zone, okay? Our tackle does a horrible job, but uh, you can see that our Warriors on the wick is now wide open, still wide open. Our QB is light with the throws. But we get it in. And that's a trick down or third down. And we have to win that game on that play. And this is the this is our first week of the season against the opponent. And this is one of those those plays that you hang your hat on that we all have on third and fourth down, where if we need it, we need it. And that was a big play for us. Now we go to, to the next the next uh, part of the season. You can see that we're still in our two by two, but now we're in a pistol look. Okay? Or not a pistol, uh, I call it ice or alpha, which means we're under center. Okay, when we're under center in the red zone, that normally means that we, we are trying to either sneak it in or we're going to pound it in in between the tackles, in between the, the guards. Okay, but in this instance, we call that same play, but because we because we're running we're running heavy inside the red inside the, inside the pen, they expect to run. We we cripple that mindset of them expecting the run. We're just now running our our um our rollout play, and we we. we Twin that with our QBB in the center, which throws them off. And you can see that he does nothing. He takes it a very, very, very easy trick down. Okay? So you can see again, where we, we try to be multiple, we give, we're giving our, our, our defenses that it would play us something to think about. But when we're in the red zone, we, we, we're giving that, them, them that mindset. That we want to be run heavy and we want to punch it in your throat, but occasionally we will get we will get fancy and we can just call it up and, and run it whenever we feel like it from different looks and we can do that from various looks. I'll show you in a minute. So the teaching in this in this instance doesn't change at all. It's only where the QB and the running back start. So instead of being in the gun into the into the to the right, he's now under center and behind him. But the handoff is still there. They're still running inside zone left. There's no new teaching. We can change it all apart from. How we line up and when we run it. And then we just take it in. And you can see it's pinching. Okay? Back to the other game. You can see that we're now we're back into our exotic formation. Our, our fag tight end is now in the left hand side. Okay? Our running back is now lined up behind the right tackle. He's going to march to the left. Okay? But this is the exact same concept that you've just seen in the first two. He's still going to run his whip. He's still going to run his, his, his slant to uh, go corner. The only difference is that the drag from this side is not going to be dragging that way. But we don't want him to get the ball anyway. He literally is going to be like, you know, going to get the motion, which is easy to it. So he's going to come in motion. We don't need to fake that handoff because he's coming in motion. Our, our, our line is still going to run inside zone rules. He's going across. We roll out, we run our whip. First down, first and goal. So you can see there that we have run the same play there three times, three formations, no new teaching apart from it. When we, when we install that that empty formation, that we install it once and they know where they are then. So the, the play itself is no new teaching. It's very, very simple and very, very easy. When we only have one practice per week or maybe two when we get into season, so that we have, our, our offensive time might be one hour. So we have to be very, very clever with the time that we use. Okay, our last clip, our last three clips is that of a of a, um, a play that we call sale, which is basically uh, fades and, and ten yard outs. Okay, which is what we we run against too high mainly. Uh, we, we like this play a lot. In this clip, we run into something else, the backside, so I ignore that. But I just wanted to show you a clip of it, of us running the sale concept to the left. So they're going to run a fade, they're going to run out to give us the first down. That's that's the initial teaching of the play. So we teach it like that first, and then that's our play and our concept. So when we manipulate that style concept to what we want to do farther down the line, we know that we can do it across the board because they know that they're running the 10 and outs 
et cetera, et cetera. When we flip it into our trips formation, we've got trips left here. Uh, receiving from the right carries, carries the route route across. So he's just going to go over from here and run straight. All we ask our, our haste to do now is to be clever and follow the, the back of this, this, uh, this V and then break it the head like you normally would. And all that does is gives us a bit of a, a bit of a natural rub. You can see that's all rub there. We just get a, he gets jammed up and we run it out there and he's making a space and he takes that bit there. Okay, and that's just how we run it in trips. Okay. So we, I've showed you how we, how we it's a little bit different in trips, so it isn't two by two, but it gives us another look. But it's no new teaching because our, our route comes across with our receiver. We don't do anything new to teach. It's still the same concept. It's still the same read for the QB. And then again, our final trip of the day, we go back to our, our other exotic formation in 2019. We're back in our wing formation. And we're still going to run that same concept. So we're still going to have our, our guys running the phase on the outside. We're still going to have our spots, even though they're five yards deep, they're still going to run that. Well, in this case, they're going to run eight, eight yard outs. So our, our concept remains the same. The teaching is the same. It was lined up in a different place. They're both breaking out. We catch the football and get a first down. So the teaching in this in this situation, you know that running back is totally wrong there, but that's beside the point. Um, you can see they, they still break it out pretty even, even though we're 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 at a, a five yard depth difference. We know where the sticks are. You can see where the sticks are here. We know we're in the right place to break out. Carried across the defense that lost. And we make that first down and move the sticks. And the reason why we make that first down is because we've already ran so many jets and so many other plays from this formation that they have to preoccupy themselves with that and keep themselves ready for um, everything we're throwing at them. And that coach pretty much sums it up for me. Uh, that was just a quick aspect, and not everything that we did, but I wanted to go through. Um, uh, more exotic looks, shall I say, because I thought it'd be more interesting than us running pro and stuff with our, our five plays. But the art of multiplicity and using your personnel to get the best out of what you can do is, for me, a, a great equaliser for any offensive coach, regardless of the level, especially for us guys that practice once a week. And I've been told that the, like the, the high school level is very relatable to us. So for the guys coaching at high, high school level or, you know, or amateur level in Canada, America, Europe, hopefully... Um, something there that you can relate to and you can you know have a think about and maybe take on board for yourselves but it, it's um it's a process that i'm heavily uh active with and um hopefully something you can enjoy it and... well, yeah absolutely and i think especially you know like we said at any level you know you're always trying to get more out of what you have right if you can get you know three or four plays out of a concept that you're spending time teaching you know that's better than just having that concept and then having a whole new set of rules for for another concept. So I think you're at any level of football that that's something that carries over and, and, and can be really important. So thank, thanks coach. It's a great presentation. And um, you know, there's, there's so many things right now as I get back into coaching that I'm trying to be wary of. And one of them is definitely, you know, not overloading the players and, you know, trying to have, especially because some of our players like me specifically coaching senior high school football, you know, usually I get players after two years of they've played JV well, the kids that I'm getting haven't played football since grade nine. Like the, the kids that are grade 11, they haven't played football. Some of them haven't played football, a down of football in high school that I'll have next fall um, or, or I'll have next summer. So, you know, as we try and put together a plan, it's, it's so important to remember that, you know, execution is so much more important than X's and O's. And, you, you know, you want to get the you want to get your players to a place where they feel comfortable. And I think, you know, the model that you've set up here is is super valuable. So coach has his contact on there. You know, I I've reached out to him. So I know he's, a, he's, you know, always ready to talk football and, and if anyone's ever interested, I, I highly recommend. And, and thanks coach. I really appreciate you coming on. Um, I didn't see any questions on the live stream. Let me hop in there with a few comments, but um, if anyone has any questions, you can throw them in there. Um, but I, I will say this for anyone who's still on here watching, we're like 80 hours away from being able to monetize our channel. So we we need 4,000 watch hours in a year. So we're over 4,000 watch hours, but you need them all in a year. 
Uh, and I think we need about 80 hours or we needed 80 going into this. So um, if, uh, if you're bored tonight and you want to throw us on somewhere, toss us on your laptop, we're, uh, we're pretty close. So anyone who wants to help us out, I know we got a pretty loyal fan base. If anyone wants to help us out, throw it on, uh, throw it on your laptop tonight, whatever. Um, and, uh, you know, even if you're watching something else, we're really close. You want to help us put us over the edge. Yeah. If you've been, uh, if you've been waiting to, uh, if you've been waiting to watch a video, now's a good time. So thanks a lot, coach. Um, I'll take us off the live here in a sec, but you know, thanks very much for doing this. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. And I wish you the very best and I'll continue to support you, you guys as long as I can.